Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan Ki and today we will be discussing about the anatomy of midbrain. So the midbrain is the connecting medium between the forebrain and the hindbrain and it extends from the lower portion of the hypothalamus to the pons. It is nearly about 2.5 cm in length and it is transversely traversed by a canal that is a cerebral aqueduct. So there is a canal which passes through the midbrain which divides the midbrain into two parts. So that we will be seeing in the further slides. So this canal which passes through it is termed as cerebral aqueduct. The cerebral aqueduct connects between the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle. So in the previous classes I have mentioned about a ventricular system in the brain which allows the transportation and the circulation of cerebrospinal fluid in and around the brain. So there are four ventricles. The starting one is the lateral ventricles. Then we have the third ventricle and we have the fourth ventricle. So the connection between the third ventricle and fourth ventricle is by the cerebral aqueduct which is 15 mm in length and it divides the midbrain into a ventral part and a dorsal part. So here we have a diagrammatic representation of the same where you can clearly see the central canal here that is the cerebral aqueduct and if an imaginary line is drawn at the level of the cerebral aqueduct it divides the midbrain into a dorsal part and a ventral part and the dorsal and ventral parts are further divided as follows. So the midbrain is composed of two parts, the tectum and the cerebral peduncle. And the cerebral peduncle is further divided into tegmentum, substantia nigra and crus cerebri. So let's have a look into the same diagram before. So the dorsal part you can see the tectum. So the dorsal part is otherwise called as the tectum while the ventral part is cerebral peduncles and the cerebral peduncle is further subdivided into three that is tegmentum, substantia nigra, then we have the crus cerebri. So these are the parts of the midbrain. So the ventral part is composed of two pillar like cerebral peduncles and the cerebral peduncles are consisting of three parts that is the anterior part that is the crus cerebri, the middle portion that is substantia nigra, then the posterior portion that is the tegmentum. So the first one that is the crus cerebri, it is the anterior most part of the cerebral peduncle which is composed of descending pyramidal and extra pyramidal fibers. So you have already studied in the introductory classes about what are pyramidal tracts and what are extra pyramidal fibers and all those stuff. So the fibers which are pertaining to the crest cerebri are the corticopontine fibers, corticospinal fibers and corticonuclear fibers. And there is a particular arrangement pattern of these fibers that is defined as the fibers that are running for the head, the, the running towards the head are most medially placed in the crest cerebri while the fibers that are there for the legs are placed most laterally in the particular arrangement. So this is the pattern of arrangement. Then we have the second part that is the substantia nigra which is a thin layer of grey matter seen between the crest cerebri and the tegmentum which separates them and superiorly it extends up to the subthalamus. We have studied about subthalamus previously. So it extends superiorly up to the subthalamus and it is consisting of a large number of multipolar hyperpigmented cells and that pigment is the reason why it is looking darker in color. So that pigment is otherwise known as the neuromelanin. And the substantia nigra is divisible into two parts. There is a dorsal part which is called as pars compacta. There is a ventral part which is called as pars reticularis. And the function is that it produces a neurotransmitter called as the dopamine. 
and it has reciprocal connection with the corpus striatum, the reticular formation and the red nucleus. So I have told you about the neurotransmitter that is the dopamine. So in case of degeneration of the substantia nigra, if the dopamine like uh, it is getting reduced, the dopamine production is reduced, that will cause a clinical condition called as the Parkinsonism. That is causing some involuntary tremors of the limbs and so many other associated features. So you can remember the clinical anatomy of substantia nigra. If it degenerates, it will lack in production of the dopamine and that will in turn cause a condition called as Parkinsonism. The third part that is the tegmentum, it is the posterior part of the cerebral peduncle which lies between the substantia nigra and the tectum and it contains important masses of grey matter as well as the fibre bundles. Then the largest of the nuclei which is present in the tegmentum is the red nucleus which is present on the upper half of the midbrain. And the tegmentum also contains the reticular formation which is continuous with that of the pons and the medulla. So we will be further studying the pons and medulla as a continuation of the midbrain. So all these three structures including midbrain, pons and medulla constitutes the brain stem. So that will be studying in the next class. That defines the tegmentum. Then comes the dorsal part of the midbrain which is composed of a single part that is the tectum. And the tectum consists of four nuclei arranged in two pairs and they are collectively termed as corpora quadrigemina. And this corpora quadrigemina is further divisible into an upper pair and a lower pair where the upper pair is termed as superior colliculus. The superior colliculus is the center for visual preference and the reflex to turn the head. So when there is a visual stimulus and if you turn your head towards that, so that reflex mechanism is possible because of the upper pair that is the superior colliculus. While the lower pair inferior colliculus that is the center for the auditory reflex, the turning of the head mechanism towards the auditory stimulus that is termed as, that is composed by the inferior colliculus. Then comes to the internal features of the midbrain. So internal features we have to define it in two sections. There are some differences in the different parts of midbrain. So generally we take two sections at two different levels to define the internal features. So the first section is through the level of superior colliculus and the second section through the level of the inferior colliculus. So the first one that is a section at the level of superior colliculus the components that we can visualize are the red nuclei in the tegmentum as we have told earlier while explaining the tegmentum then the oculomotor nucleus you have already studied about the origin point of the oculomotor nerve so that is the oculomotor nucleus then the edinger westphal nucleus then the pretectal nucleus and a bundle of ascending fibers which includes the medial lemniscus trigeminal lemniscus and the spinal lemniscus and two groups of decussating fibers which are the dorsal tegmental decussations and the ventral tegmental decussations. So these are the things that you will be observing inside the midbrain when you take a section at the level of the superior colliculus. So the diagrammatic representation of the same has been shown here where you can see the superior colliculus so we have taken the section at the level of the superior colliculus. Then you can see the cerebral aqueduct here. Then you can see the edinger westphal nucleus here. And just below that you can see the oculomotor nucleus from which the oculomotor nerve is coming. Then we have the red nucleus here. And here we have the dorsal tegmental decussation and the ventral tegmental decussation and along with that the fibers bundle of fibers which includes the spinal lemniscus trigeminal lemniscus and the medial lemniscus 
has been represented here. So these are the important features you should know about the internal structure of midbrain at the level of the superior colliculus. And here this blue color right here represents the substantia nigra and here we have the crest cerebri so that we have seen in the previous diagram. So the next level, the section at the level of the inferior colliculus where we will be observing the trochlear nucleus which gives rise to the trochlear nerve and then the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and a bundle of fibers which includes the medial lemniscus, the trigeminal lemniscus and the spinal lemniscus and then the lateral lemniscus and the decussations of superior cerebellar peduncle and the rubrospinal tracts. So the rubrospinal tracts have been already been taken in the previous class. Then the inferior colliculus probably concerned with the reflexes involving the auditory stimuli as we have discussed earlier. So these features you will be observing in a section at the level of the inferior colliculus. So let's have a diagrammatic representation of the same. We have the section here, the tegmentum, the tectum, then you can see the substantia nigra, then you can see the crest cerebri. So along with that you can see the trochlear nucleus here which gives rise to the trochlear nerve. Then we have the inferior colliculus here. Just lateral to it you can find the lateral lemniscus. Then you can see a slight change in arrangement of the fibers, bundle of fibers. Here we have the spinal lemniscus, trigeminal lemniscus and the medial lemniscus. And the reticular formation has been represented here while the decussation of the superior cerebellar peduncle has been represented here. So these are the basic features you should know regarding the section at the level of the inferior colliculus through the midbrain. The clinical anatomy of the midbrain includes two syndromes. There are much more syndromes which are associated with the midbrain but I am just clinging on to these two syndromes here. The first one is the Weber syndrome where the corticospinal tract is involved causing the contralateral hemiplegia and if the oculomotor nerve is involved there will be ipsilateral oculomotor nerve palsy. Ipsilateral means on the same side of the lesion and along with that it will be presenting with the lateral squint. So these are the typical features of Weber syndrome while the Benedict syndrome here the oculomotor nerve rootlets if they are involved it will cause the same uh, symptoms as told above the ipsilateral oculomotor nerve palsy with the lateral squint while if the red nucleus is also involved it causes the contralateral coarse tremors there will be slight tremors on the contralateral side of the lesion and if the medial lemniscus is involved, it will cause the contralateral hemianesthesia. Anesthesia already you know like what will happen, like there will be like the stimulus won't be acting upon the sensory system. So the contralateral hemianesthesia is the typical feature of the medial lemniscus involvement. So this concludes the anatomy of the midbrain. Thank you.